one thing that often irks me uh, in my everyday life, probably since a decade ago when I uh, almost ended my adolescent years and uh, I started my early 20s because every single day I feel like I have to face this kind of dichotomy. The dichotomy is whether one should rely on plans, knowledge, or whether one should uh, trial and error. Um, people, people don't often talk about this because uh, these two things are kind of procedural, it's kind of nebulous, very hard to talk about, unlike, unlike you chatting about politics, football, movies, those are very substantive. And uh, to, to simply illustrate these, these, two, uh, these two different, uh, di these two diametrically opposing approaches, let's talk, first talk about plans and knowledge. Plans and knowledge is definitely uh, uh, the ethos of education system. The whole idea, why do you put a newly born human into formal institutions, sitting in front of a classroom, uh, be, being confined into a school compound and he or she has to go through tons of textbooks, listen to lectures, uh, listen to instructions of an adult in front, uh, you have primary schools, high schools, universities. The reason why societies uh, do this is because societies believe uh, a person should not trial and error mindlessly. A person should not have uh, zero certainty and go out venture things uh, mindlessly and therefore societies believe that uh, you are able to garner and harness knowledge plans into your minds by sheer reading by sheer listening on textbooks all those kind of things and then when you finish all this absorption of knowledge when you go out you know what to do that uh, you have very little uncertainties left. On the other hand, uh, it is also quite surprising, trial and error, the opposite camp, uh, has garnered quite some supporters. It has also become quite an ethos uh, among uh, quite a lot of groups of people, particularly the business people. They often talk about trial and error, trial and error, and of course the scientists, definitely. And the gist of this uh, trial and error um, ethos is that it is very very hard to know okay for sure one of the uh, kind of banal statement people often say is that the world is inherently, inherently uncertain um, the only constant in the world is change and therefore whatever that is being laid down in, on your textbook whatever your adult uh, your parents, your teachers tell you are subject to change and in fact sometimes they could be so wrong in the sense that what, whatever they say are completely outdated and hence you could rely on no one especially yourself uh, the saying goes uh, whatever you listen or hear your, or you read is the experience of others and only and until only you truly experience something yourself, you truly started doing something yourself, uh, you won't know anything. And the father of this kind of thinking is, uh, is definitely Socrates. Socrates lamented and berated books and writing at length because he, think, he thought that um, whatever that has been written, when a reader reads it, it is going to be a hearsay. It's going to be a third person's narrative. It's not going to be as accurate as you observing itself. And oddly enough, uh, if you subscribe to this kind of trial and error camera, you're inevitably admitting that all about, about 12 to 17 years of formal schooling is an utter waste of time. Uh, some even more delusional people say that oh all these exams are meaningless just memorize it vomit it just vomit all the answers and then eventually you only truly truly start to learning during the first day of your job that that really uh befathers me because 
If that is true, why do you waste so many years of formal schooling sitting in classroom on papers, on textbooks? Why don't you straight away at 15 years old, straight, to, straight away getting a job and sit on the desk for the first day of your job and truly start learning? That is something really, uh, really uh, befuddling me. And, and those are the two extremes about knowledge and trial and error. And of course, uh, in our world, there are a number of things uh, that seem to be quite clear which approach you ought to be taking. Uh, for example, nobody in your right mind will tell you that you ought to read a textbook or you should take an exam uh, when you learn how to ride a bicycle, how to cook, how to, uh, how to, how to ride a bicycle, how to cook, and how to swim. But, but, uh, but it is rather alarming. Actually, I think more and more people want formal instructions. Even in cooking or swimming, people often take formal courses, which might be redundant. Uh, definitely cycling is very little, very few people actually take courses. But people generally agree that uh, cooking, swimming and cycling, those, those domains are kind of tactile. And hence, hence uh, people don't really regard knowledge, theoretical knowledge as a uh, goal. Definitely not. However, on the other hand, um, on the other hand, very oddly, some people regard some other domains as impossible to try and error, error. And at least, and at the very least, they are incredibly averse to try and error in those domains. Typically, sciences, uh, typically business. It's, it's very not clear why do people have to study years of a business degree in order to understand a business when it is so much better for you to today right up straight away go out and run a lemonade stand, run a grocery store, uh, try doing sales by giving out flyers, talking to people, cold calling people. You could learn by real hands-on experience, but it's not clear why do people sit in classroom for four years, three years studying theories about marketing, HR, all kinds of nonsense. And likewise, people think, oh, uh, people think students should sit in classrooms and learn about the theory of physics, chemistry, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't really understand. And uh, those, those are the obvious examples. People think cooking, swimming, you ought to be trial, uh, you ought to be in the mode of trial and error. And physics, business, people think you should start with theory first. Although I disagree very much with the latter. And uh, when I say uh, this dichotomy often irks me, and often bewilders me, is because. Uh, there are so many moments I realize trial and error uh, actually mm, the, the problem of trial and error is uh, at the beginning you must you must confront errors it is it's inevitable and error is very painful that is the downside of trial and error definitely and however the upside of trial and error is you gain almost 100% certainty after a lot, a lot, a lot of errors. It's very robust. And uh, meanwhile, the opposite approach, the knowledge approach, the upside is that it seems like you could, uh, you could avoid errors altogether. After all, right, some people have already committed the errors and formulate a formula for you, then you should be able to apply it and avoid all pitfalls. That is the utopian dream of the knowledge camp. And that seems to be the upside that the knowledge knowledge approach is uh, promising you. In fact, the entire education system, your teachers, your schools, your universities are promising you that. Just listen to us, just go through whatever hoops that we set up for you, and then your life is set. Afterwards, you know what to do. Afterwards, your life won't have uncertainties. That is what the formal education system uh, is advocating. That is the upside of the knowledge camp. And the downside is somewhat uh, spooky. The downside of the knowledge and plan planning approach it is uh, somewhat uh, capricious. 
it is very hidden. The downside is your knowledge actually there are many moments your knowledge doesn't work. There are too many loopholes. And and when when your knowledge doesn't work, nobody is there to save you because you are not used to trial and error yourself. You error for people who who have been practicing the mode of trial and error for so such a long time, errors they say a familiarity breeds contempt, right? So if you stumble upon error almost every single day, you 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 basically not only lose fear uh, towards them, but also you, you start to internalize and think they are your allies. However, if you are always the knowledge, you always practice a knowledge approach, when error manifests itself, it seems to be really uh, horrifying. That is the downside. Um, I think it's, it's best to illustrate using uh, a, a, a metaphor. A metaphor I think is like this. Let's say I, what if I have 10 boxes in front of you and I tell you among these 10 boxes, one of them contains a key that is important for you to unlock a door. How would, you, and then that's all. I, I give absolutely no more information for you. No more extra information. And then you have to devise and figure out how to find out a key. And 10 boxes, uh, are not too much, right? Too, not too many, right? So people typically, intuitively, what you do, you open all the boxes one by one and eventually stumble upon the, the key. If you're lucky, the key is in the first box you open, great. If you're unlucky, you will waste and, and encounter errors for nine times at least. You open nine boxes, all of them have no keys. All of them are empty. And then at the tenth box, you finally found your key. That is a trial and error approach. Uh, it it has some it has some unpredictability. The first the worst case scenario is the nine boxes you will waste all your effort. But the the the, the great thing is, for sure, the tenth box at the tenth box you will get it. That is a robustness of a trial and error approach. On the other hand, if you, let's say you are a person averse to try and error, you, can, you cannot afford committing error. Let's say you have 10 boxes, and whenever you open an empty box, somebody would whip you, or even somebody would point a gun on your head and kill you. And in that scenario, you can't afford uh, to practice try and error. You have to rely on knowledge. What is a knowledge? It's very hard. You don't really know. You have to ask I don't even know what kind of knowledge can you devise actually. Uh, maybe you observe the boxes from ex externally, you have to gather investigation, you try to see whether there were there were camera recordings recording uh, me inserting the key, these kind of things. So knowledge is very whimsical, very, very hard to gain it. Of course you have it, it's the best. If you have the knowledge which box contains the key, holy grail, then holy moly, you can get a key immediately. And likewise, in real life, every single thing, no matter the decision on uh, your spouse, your, your business, or what kind of products you should sell, whether you should do project A, project B, uh, how do you write codes, what books should you write, all kind of decision, it seems to be impossible to have a holy grail knowledge approach. There are just way too much of uncertainties. However, at the same time, if you always rely on only pure trial and error, uh, it seems to be horrendously inefficient. I'm not too sure, could, could we, uh, do we have so much of resources to practice trial and error incessantly? So that is the fundamental uh, paradox uh, I often encounter every single day. I definitely have no answer. Uh, uh, preferably, I still like trial and error because uh, the error manifests itself upfront. All right, so you have less uncertainties hidden underneath. You don't have a pile of dynamites hidden under the under the barrel. Okay, so this is just a short harangue, and I'll stop here and see you. Goodbye.